Hey everybody, it's Anthony here with Edge Power Tools and I'm here today to give you kind of a quick tip of a run through of all the different roles that there are in Zoom. There aren't many roles, but the hosting roles can be a little confusing if you're not aware of a few uh, key things. So I just wanted to kind of take you through those. There are four roles in Zoom. There's the hosting role, the alternative host, the co-host, and the participant. So the host is uh, the creator of the meeting. They create all the meetings uh, and the links and everything um, that your participants are involved with. They start and stop the meeting. They admit participants from the waiting room. They can send participants to the waiting room in the middle of a the meeting. They can start and stop the breakout rooms. They can remove participants from the meeting. They can chat privately with all participants in the meeting. They can float between the various breakout rooms. Once you have the breakout rooms set up uh, and the participants are in the, in the breakout rooms, the, the host can float between those various rooms. They can mute the audio and video of any participant. They can uh, they create and manage the polls that are done throughout the meetings. They can set alternative hosts and they can set co-hosts or hope our hosts. Alternative hosts are set up before the meeting starts in the Zoom dashboard underneath the meeting settings. Uh, and co-hosts uh, or transferring the role of hosts are done in, in during a meeting, so in the middle of a meeting. The alternative host, host role is assigned, like I said, prior to the role prior to the meeting starting in the Zoom dashboard. The, the, the reason to have an alternative host is if you are not, as the host and the creator of the meeting, not available to start uh, or stop the meeting. So uh, essentially what happens with the alternative host role is that the alternative host um, can start the meeting and has all the same rights and privileges as the host of the meeting until the original host um, joins the meeting or unless the original host joins the meeting. So basically, once the original host joins the meeting, the alternative host, all those rights and privileges go away and they become just a regular participant in the meeting. Um, to me, this was a little confusing to kind of understand at first. I assumed that if you gave a person the alternative host role, that they'd have, uh, like basically be a co-host, that they'd have all the similar functions to a host in the meeting, but that's not the case. So the alternative host is the host of the meeting until or unless the original host, the creator of the meeting, joins the meeting. Which kind of brings us to the next role, which is co-hosting. Co-hosting is assigned midstream in, during the meeting and while the meeting's happening. The co-host role can stick in between meetings. So for instance, if you have another teacher or an instructional assistant that's joining you in the meeting and um, you assign them the role of co-host, if you use that same link, uh, the same code to, to, for each of those meetings, um, they should still be the co-host during each meeting. Uh, it's something that you wanna make sure that you check if they don't have the expected uh, functions that uh, the tools available to them that you think they should have or they think they should have in the meeting, just check to make sure they are still a co-host. If they're not a co-host, it's super easy to go in and just um, select their name under the participants menu and assign them the co-hosting role. But that's a, a one that kind of is a little bit weird. Um, so the co-host role, like I said, is assigned by the host during the meeting. And um, some important things to keep in mind about the co-host is that they cannot create a meeting uh, because again, it's assigned during the meeting. So they're not gonna create that. They're not the creator of that meeting. The other thing uh, is they can't start or stop the meeting. So unless the co-host is listed as an alternative host, they're not gonna be able to start the meeting without the host being present. The co-host can help manage uh, admitting participants from the waiting room, which is a good thing, important thing for, for co-hosts to do. They can send participants to the waiting room. So if in the middle of a session, a student uh, or participant needs a timeout or something like that, they can send them to the waiting room. They can't start or stop breakout rooms. They cannot do that. That's not a function of the co-host. Only the host can start or stop the breakout rooms. Um, they can remove participants from the meeting. So if you flat out just need to remove a participant from a meeting for whatever reason, they don't belong there, uh, or for any other reasons that you may deem necessary, uh, they, can't, uh, they can remove those participants from the meeting. They can chat privately with all participants in the meeting. 
They can uh, not float between various breakout rooms. The host can assign a co-host to a breakout room, but they can't just switch on their own. Um, so that's something important to keep in mind there. They can mute the audio and video of all participants. They uh, can't uh, create or manage or start the polls that they have that are set up for the for that particular meeting. Uh, they cannot set any alternative hosts. Again, that goes back to creating the meeting. The alternative hosts are created before the meeting, uh, so the co-host doesn't have any control over that. Uh, they can't set co-hosts or hosts. They can remove their co-hosting abilities, but they can't choose another person to be a co-host or a host. And again, just to reiterate, a host can assign the ability to co-host or transfer the role of host to any participant, and that happens during the meeting. So if uh, an instructional assistant or a co-teacher logs into the meeting and for whatever reason is not um, listed as a co-host and you want them to be, you can easily transfer that assignment. Or you can easily assign them to be the co-host, or if you need to step away from the meeting and you want a, one of uh, the participants to have control of the meeting, you can transfer the role of host to any participant in the meeting, and that includes students. Participants in the meeting have much more limited roles. They can join the meeting with login information provided by the host. They can leave the meeting at any time. They can um, be admitted to the waiting uh, to the meeting from the waiting room if you have the waiting room enabled. They can join a breakout room assigned by the host. They can chat privately with just the hosts and co-hosts, uh, and they can post to the general group chat if you have that enabled by the host. Uh, so if you um, want the general group chat enabled and you want the participants to be able to post to the general chat, you can do that. Otherwise, they can just chat privately with the hosts and the co-hosts. They can mute and unmute themselves. They can turn on and off their video. They can respond to polls. They can be given permission to co-host or host. And that is it. Uh, so if you have any questions about any of those roles, um, let me know. I am happy to kind of go into that in more detail and please check out the other quick tips that are um, here on my page to uh, learn about how to start and stop any of these features that I kind of alluded to in this quick presentation. Thank you so much and I hope that was helpful and I hope you have a great day. Bye.